Yes, the drop my show on me back. That was our lead. Well, are you that somebody? Man, 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 man. She was an angel. She yes. was <laughs> on the rise of her career, literally. Do you feel like they killed her? No. Do you think, not? All right. So I think there was no real, that, Okay, they said the plane was overloaded. I felt like there might have been some type of thing. That's where Jay Z really took off, if you remember, after she died. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. You know what? I'm gonna be the conspiracy. I'm gonna be the conspiracy theorist over here. But he really took off when she died. Like then, you know, Damon Dash was gonna, he was probably around for maybe like another five years after that. Then he pushed Damon out. So I feel like there might have been some real questioning behind her her death. I mean, you never know. You I don't believe yeah, that. Yeah, you thank you, know. thank you, you never know. Know. Nima, our, our, our board, she holds the board down, and she's a, like an ill-ass intern, but she's more than that. She just agreed with me, so thank you, so. Yo, but we here with <laughs> Bia and, <laughs> yo, we are excited because we love when we have these people that come on, and they are authentic, mm -hmm. and we're really? talking, and they are really talking, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. We love it. We haven't had someone come here. That's like, oh, we can't talk about can't that. Talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So let's. So in the book, you talk about prostitution. How did you get into that, and what brought you out of it? Mm -hmm. Um, I really don't like to use the word prostitution because I never, you know, stood on the corner or went to okay. the all that kind of stuff. Um, it was just more so. You know, I had a neighborhood guy that knew me since a little girl, watched me grow up, watched me once a little teenager. And I was vulnerable, I was vulnerable at the time. Um, I was a single parent with my older son. At the time, his father was incarcerated, so I had this so-called old hand in my ear, like, this is the way of life, you're pretty, you're bitch, but go out there and chase the money, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna tell you anything wrong. So me believing him, because I needed the guidance or I trusted him because I knew him since a little girl, I believed what he was saying, which caused me to live a lifestyle that I didn't know anything about. Mm -hmm. I was just a normal teenager at one point in time and just got exposed to the streets. So mm -hmm. what at what point did you say enough is enough with it? Uh what point? Um, when I just got tired, like just honestly, when you live in that lifestyle and you messing with different guys and you known for that, you get tired because as you keep doing it, each guy that you encounter is like they take a piece of your soul, they take a piece of you mm -hmm. with them. So it's like, do I really want to keep living like this? Do I really want to keep having these men take a piece of me? Mm -hmm. uh, and wow. it's just like you that's, just you never the same. That's and deep. then even after that, it's just like, who want to be known for that? Like, right. It's like, because then they friends know you. And then it's one thing about the streets. You can't have a good heart. You have to have a black heart. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you either down or you ain't down. There's no in between. How so long like, were you doing that for? Um, I was in, I want to say from 18 until 21. Did you 21. know other girls that were doing it as well? That it was like a bunch of y'all, or it was just, no, it was, it was just me. Just, I yeah. always said, I'm with that. Bye. You got uh uh. I was in the next one. Men, when I try to keep it just a little classy, <laughs> it's crazy as it sounds, but you know, I was doing my thing with standards. <laughs> Would you give to these young women today? Like you have, you have this book, and I suggest everyone reads it because it's definitely going to give you some knowledge about never giving up. You know what I mean? And, and and knowing that you know what you've been through, just like you said, does not define you. You know what I mean? You dictate your life, and easily you could have became a bum. You could have turned into drugs. You could have your life could have went so opposite direction that is going down where you're a author you're an actress you're you know a fashion and makeup designer like all of these things you could have went the opposite direction what do you think it was that gave you the 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 power to push forward and 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 just become this woman you are now um like i said i just 
I just got tired. Like I just knew that I had more to give. I knew I had a better calling than this because I always been so smart and just ambitious and you know, I always been a hustler and all that. And it's like this is not my life. But then it's like even so living that lifestyle it's like the best you did, the best you go. So it's like I'm doing this and then I gotta turn around and do it again, do it again. It's like I'm not being an asset and it's like I just got tired. Like I knew I wanted to be more than what I was, but my circumstances, my environment caused me to be somebody that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I just got tired. I just wanted to be who I really am. You talked about abuse in the book. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get like beat up by any of these people, or where did you experience that? That yeah, I was in a couple of abusive relationships. Um, my first relationship, I was fifteen at the time, and I ran away from home. Um, I had an older boyfriend took me. How old was he? He was 22, 21 at the time. Um, I thought I knew it all. Me and my mom got into a head of fight. I'm like, you know, I hate you. I'm never coming back. I can take care of myself. I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Left home, went with my so-called boyfriend, ran to him. I'm like, mom, this and that. And I left. And he prayed on me. He was older, so I stayed. And mm -hmm. he was just abusive. And I ended up having to leave. Mm -hmm. And I went to go stay with his sister. Um, for a while, where that's why I ended up meeting my son father mm -hmm. because he, you know, tried to take me one time. I knew my son father since high school, so we was friends at the time. He tried to take me, he moved to so he removed me from the situation. Yeah, um, yeah but it, uh, yeah, it, it was rough. It was rough. Like, what is some of the things that parents need to watch out for because there is a lot of young adults out here around like 14, 15 getting into these relationships with these older men and they're constantly preying on them and abusing them. What's some of those signs that you can tell them what to watch out for? Um, if they always just, you know, sugarcoating and telling you don't worry about it, um, I got your bag, leave that situation. If they telling you to go left and you know you're supposed to go right, then don't fall for that. Don't go for the old mask on their face and they rubbing your bag and telling you it's gonna be okay. I got you, don't do that. You need somebody that's gonna tell you, look, fix your situation. You don't belong in this. You need to go to school. You need to make it right with your parents. You need to be a teenager. Them the type of men that show up being honest exactly. with you and upfront about exactly. it, and not trying to uh, get you to look the other way or not even think about it. They're exactly. making you run from the reality instead of facing that head on. Exactly. Wow, that's interesting. Um, so tell us about your cosmetic. Well, before you do that. I had a question about, um, we were talking about this on the break, but um, her name is Sinto Sintonia Brown. Right. Um, she was a 16-year-old a um, victim of prostitution, um, neglect, and you know she ran away from home. Sort of the story you had, mm -hmm. but her outcome obviously was different, where she killed, uh, killed one of her predators um, because she thought that he was actually going to kill her. And as a result, she wound up getting life in prison um, at the age of 16. She's now 29 years old, and she's now just being granted clemency um, to where she'll go in front of a judge and they'll reconsider her outcome. H have you heard of that story? Yeah, you? absolutely. Yeah, I heard of the story. Um, I just think it's, it's pretty sad because sometimes we turn to the system and the system follows us. Mm -hmm. Like her, for example, she was a teenager. Just like I said, when you are living a certain lifestyle, people are, you know, mentally and sexually abusing you, then you get tired, it's like, it, it drives you crazy, where it's, like, it's no longer you anymore, like, you turn into somebody else, and they've taken away you a piece at a time, a piece at a time, and said, you can't take this, like, how much do you expect a person to take? Like, what do you expect them to do with it? And it's just sad, yeah. it's really sad. So yeah, I, I, um, I remember seeing her story, and, and then there was all this talks, you know, a couple of months ago about her possibly getting out. Um, so I hope she gets out. I really do. I feel like, you know, they, they, they felt her, like you said, where she needed rehab, the hard therapy, instead of just being thrown away and locked away. You know, as if she's like some type of animal. Trash. But she was, right? She was, she was trash. She was just Horrible. like, I'm a little girl with probably big dreams. And yeah. every young girl is. You yeah. know, it's a normal girl with big dreams. And you, and you get derailed, you know what I mean? Life, mm -hmm. life, and, and like you said, certain individuals come in and just can really mess you up. So, um, we gotta get her your book. We gotta see how we can send her a copy yes. of your book. I know. Yes. Her book is gonna be up to change too, because I can't. I'm quite sure Jay Z is going to do something for her. Cause you think they, so? Cause Kim Kardashian sent her lawyer to meet with them. 
So there's some powerful people oh, that's one. I hope so. I hope she did do that. Yeah. So I, that that's phenomenal of Kim if she did do that. I've, I've heard I've been reading some articles that Kim has secretly been doing some things yeah. for a lot of women who are um, incarcerated yeah. as well as a grandma who um, has been caught doing a life or served a life sentence for a nonviolent crime her first time being arrested. And she has a life sentence as well. So I heard Kim tough out here. Yes. Women and yeah. men. I mean, we women. We don't have to ask We have it rough, okay? We have to deal with so much. Yeah. Deal so much. We have it rough. Mm -hmm. And that's why you gotta be the baddest bitch out there. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Trina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Trina, the baddest bitch on the drop night show. Let's go. And we're back. The drop night show on me, bro. K Wonder with my boy Sean Beasley. Yeah. We have our lovely guest, beautiful guest. And um, she's lovely, fellas. She is. She is <laughs> definitely a beautiful woman. Um, Miss Davida and author, actress, and super mom. Um, but before we get into the rest of this interview, I definitely want to talk in big bills. Yeah. We gotta, <laughs> gotta, we gotta show our sponsors some love. All right, so shout out to Samson Technology, okay? They actually provide all the equipment that you are listening or uh, watching this one right now. They have you covered for all things needed when it comes to producing a podcast or taking a picture or whatever you want to do with technology, they have you covered. So make sure you go to Samson Technology, um, follow them on IG, and just see what they got going on there. They're, it's If you don't know what Samson are, you're, you're, you're crazy. <laughs> And then shout out to waterice.com. They are your scoop for everything Philly. Go to waterice.com and sign up for their email blast um, where you will be in tuned and in the know of all things Philadelphia. They got you covered on where's the best restaurants to eat, where are the best clothing stores, the best nightclubs, even down to um, what holidays are going on in the city. And uh, make sure you sign up for that, waterice.com. They are your scoop. To everything Philly. So let's get back into this interview with Davida. So <clears throat> you said you love to make up and you got this cosmetic line going on. What's this about? Yeah, it's still in the um, early stages. Uh, I'm looking to release it sometimes in the fall, but it's called Vita Hands uh, Cosmetic Line. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm super excited about it because I have a BB cream coming out. Oh, wow! Yeah. Look at that. What is that? What is that? What is that? Okay, it's like in between foundation and lotion. I was not too heavy. Um, it's like really great for people that's not big on makeup but still want something to give them that even skin tone. Okay. Um, I have a couple natural ingredients that's going to be in there, help with your skin, not mess it up. So I'm excited about it, but I'm taking it slow. I can take everything slow so that I know it goes That's gotcha. all right. So you're starting with the BB creams. Are you going to do lips? Are you going to do. You are an uh, eyebrow fanatic, so you yeah, <laughs> definitely <laughs> not an eyebrow. Sure. <laughs> she, she said, yes, I'm gonna have some. I'm gonna have some eyebrow stems too. Okay. I'm gonna have some eyebrow stems. Yeah, well, make sure I get mine, you know, because I'm gonna step out of this conversation. Yeah. I'm like, I'm well. Yeah, I got you. No, for sure. I definitely will be looking for that. And um, the acting. So you said that you were, you're definitely about to start pursuing the acting a little bit more, but you started out doing video. Cameos and such. Yeah, cameos, and um, I was in a couple um, red artist um, videos. I was featured in there and stuff like that, so it was kind of fun. Really? I was like, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, what is his name? His name is Trev. Trav. Um, he's a rapper. I did a video, and he actually did a little skit to my book for me, so that was like super cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was like, love. Yeah, I love. Yeah, so I want to definitely get his name. Maybe I'll be some type of superhero or cop, something. <laughs> That is fun. I love it. All right, so let's go back to this book. How does it end? How does how does how does this book end? What where do you, where do you want your readers to walk away from this book knowing or basically um, yeah, knowing that you either that you either can go right or left and you can repeat the cycle. It's up to you at the each situation whether you want to keep repeating the same cycle. And I chose to walk away from that cycle. I just closed that chapter of my life and just moved on. And I just wanted to reinvent myself here. So, you know, it's, it's just up to you whether you want to repeat that cycle or not. Okay. Now, my question is you have four sons. Yes. Right? What do you. Four kings. 
What do you teach them? Um, well, first what I teach them is that the sky is the limit. If your mother can do this as a single parent, no child support, no court system, no welfare, no nothing, um, and I can do it from the muscle. Wow! The skies is the limit to y'all. You know, I still go through my struggles and all that kind of stuff, but I don't, it's no excuses for y'all. I'm still rushing as a mother to be the best mom possible and also chase my dreams. And that's so hard because so many people get robbed from their dreams when they become a parent, and I'm going both and I want to share it. If you want it bad enough, you can do it, but I'm not to stop. Now, do you give them advice how to treat a woman at this point? Yes. Yeah, why not? Treat them, like, yeah, you <laughs> treat them how you would treat your mother. Okay. And I teach my kids that like now, you know, I teach them to hold the door when we walk out, they always hold the door for me. I tell them thank you. Um, I just install in my kids how, you know, I want them to be how they should be as young men. How I want my morals to be. Exactly. <laughs> morals, standards, integrity, all that good stuff. You know, because we need more good men out there. And I got a chance to pick four in the world. That's awesome. <laughs> That's been awesome. So, did they read your book? My older son, he started reading it, but he put it down. And he was like, Mom, I can't read this right now. So, he was, I, gave him, yeah, okay. he was yeah. so I gave him the choice, and I told him, you know, certain things that I, would, I wasn't proud that I did. But, son, you know, this is me. This is what your mom did at the time. This is what I thought was right at the time. Right. So, he just wasn't ready. So, once he get a little older, yeah. That's amazing. That's I, awesome. I absolutely that awesome. commend you. Like I, I, like you said, a lot of women don't have the strength, and you are a strong woman. As mm -hmm. petite as you are, you are a very strong woman. <laughs> and it's short too. Oh. She's so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he don't know what petite <laughs> means. He <laughs> sure don't know what petite means. <laughs> 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 He's a good thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So listen, um, we, we actually are enjoying our conversation right yeah. now. Listen, all right, we have some, some current events, all right? I want to talk about this. Let's talk about the lady. This right. black girl goes to Yale. Mm -hmm. You so, might have seen this on social media currently. She right goes now. to Yale. And of course, you're studying, mm -hmm. you get tired. She fell asleep in the common area. Mm -hmm. And someone. A white woman. Called the cops. Saying that, she, mind you, she's a full blown student. She called an ID and everything. And yeah. she fell asleep in the common area at in her dorm. And another student who was happened to be an older white woman called the cops on her, claiming that she did not belong there. So the cops came, interrogated her for 15 minutes straight. That four cops come and follow her. her. Follow her to her dorm room. She had to open, open up the her door, door, show them her ID. Yeah. They still didn't believe that she was a student. Like there was a so it was like the most crazy irony. And she day. said, I showed them my ID and told them I have work with them. Because they was they were so hounding this girl and she she videotaped this that everyone could see. It reached everywhere. It's it's yeah, viral. It went viral. It's, it went viral. viral. Then what is mouth dropping is that the dean says, oh, the police followed the procedure. Excuse me? I mean- This girl paid, you know how much it costs to go to Yale? And that is, that is something that we all want to go. We all want to achieve to go to a school like that. I didn't want to go to a school like that. <laughs> I didn't care to go to Yale. <laughs> But I mean, you got Princeton, you got Yale. Yeah. Yeah, these schools are these schools. So for us to go there, that's something major. Mm -hmm. We go there to learn what they learn. We want. I think you. I think you're missing the point, Sean. The, no. the point is that there are a lot of Caucasian people who feel, like they, who feel like they can call the cops and yeah. the cops will come and detain black people. And I and I say that because. Also, in, in this week currently trending, um, there was uh, four black women who were at an Airbnb and they were leaving their Airbnb, loading up their car, and this is in California. And they were out there because they were at this big uh, festival called uh, Kaya Festival that Bob Marley's family does. One of the girls who actually was the four women that they were- Was Bob Marley. Was Bob Marley's granddaughter. And this white woman called the cops on them saying that they, they were stealing. stealing out of the house. Oh 
So then they got detained by like a whole sw swarm of cops. They had a helicopter coming in on them. All of this stuff for four women that were loading their car to go to the airport to catch their flight to go back home because they were staying at an Airbnb. And it was all because they did not wave back at the white lady who called the cops. Hard. That is crazy. <laughs> and they were detained Hard. for at least like an hour and some change. And it was all viral again. And the just so happened the young lady who's about uh, Marley's granddaughter is suing. Mm. She's suing the police. She yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it's getting that to, just like with the Waffle House with the girl who got hemmed up at the with the police at the Waffle yeah. House. Another person called the cops. The the Starbucks people with the Starbucks guys. These Caucasians feel like they can call the cops on every little thing. And it was just so funny because earlier today. I was at my dad's house and I seen something. He was like, check this out. And I'm looking at it and it's this white lady calling the cops on two black guys who are barbecuing in a park where a designated area to barbecue, calling the cops, talking about they can't be out here barbecuing with charcoal. What? <laughs> and then she went on and was lying like this white, luckily this other white lady who was like, you know, you're wrong, was videotaping her the whole time. And she was like, oh, they can't be out here with it. It was just, it's just getting to a point where it's like, really? Is How this do what, you feel is this? about that? Like, when you know you have four black men and so much of this is going on, are you afraid for them? While afraid. afraid that when they out and about, they can be faced with something like this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because it, it's, it's more common on, especially with black young men. Um, so I, that's definitely one of my fears. It, it, it's just not right. It's, it's not right. Like, we all here for one purpose, just to be happy and enjoy life. It's like, who are you to tell me that you are better than me or because of our skin color? Like, how long is this one last for? It's been hundreds of years. Like, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. <laughs> but I think for us, we have to keep talking about it because <clears throat> if they're not talking about it, who's going to talk about our stories? Yeah. And you're fair skinned. <laughs> wait, no, wait, 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 Hello, my name is. Oh. <laughs> my name is. Oh. What's your name? Oh, yeah, your name is. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> like, so. She's like, 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 I know one of those do it five or six days. And the only other thing I know is me now. All right. And you sound crazy. I don't even know what that means. Yeah. So we're gonna answer this next song. It's um Bye Bye Blood. Yo, stop. Yeah, this is a deep record. It's a new song, Bye Bye Blood. 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 Bye Bye Who's unsigned, but he's still signed the MMG? That was wild thoughts for me. <laughs> oh, was it? I put two songs in. Oh, oh no. <laughs> that was wild thoughts. You didn't hear it? It was so loud. You did not hear that? I thought that was the intro. <laughs> so what? Oh. You come back and you're like, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was the no. intro of me saying the wrong song. <laughs> Yeah. Yo, but we here with Vita and like it's been a it's it's a pleasure to finally meet you. I heard so much about you and I see you have a lot going on. A yes. lot going on. So yes, thanks for taking time out of your schedule to sit with the crazy old people at the Drop Night Show. Oh, oh. I said crazy. You said crazy old people. Did I say old? Don't you know? You talk about money. I ain't got no over here. You know what I'm but but uh so what is a day in the life of Vita like? Jeez, y'all really want to know? Yeah. Sometimes I don't even go to sleep. Sometimes it's like, um, first it starts with my kids. Uh, I get them ready for school, um, get them up once I get them situated, then the school's back to the 
that I'm an entrepreneur and I'm so it's like, okay, set up this, do this, do this event, hustle, get my hustle on here, and then still gotta work and survive until, you know, everything do what it's supposed to do. So it, it's kinda crazy and I'm always trying to balance everything out. So I try to incorporate as much life balance as possible. I hear that. So you're a hardworking woman, a beautiful lady, yes. and you have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And do you have a How do you, <gasps> right. you, you, you find time? No, I'm secretive. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I love the word test. I'm so fantastic. So there is someone <laughs> in your life. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Are you guys serious? You think so? No, yes. maybe. Okay. <laughs> you so they get appreciate it. you. Absolutely. You're busy. Yeah. Okay. They busy too. That's that's awesome. I like it. Yeah. So, that's so awesome. they're like, well, you know, when we do our stuff, we miss each other. You may not make a special hour, and then you go back and do what you do. Let me do what I do. Let me keep them <laughs> Now, on IG. Yes. What's your DMs look like? <laughs> Wow, you try to slide in? No, no, no. Cool. Oh. I mean, it'd be all types of stuff in there. Crazy stuff? Sometimes. Crazy pictures? I had a couple of them. I like, what in the world are you doing? Like, buy a book, don't send these pictures. <laughs> Tell me you want 50 or 100 copies. <laughs> I'm waiting for the day a female would just show they be him just to expose all the people. Come on, let's do it right now. That would be so dope. You want to do it? Let's do it right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That would be dope. Save this time. Y'all better stay out the damn. <laughs> she told you better stay out that DM. Because it definitely goes down. <laughs> um, what, <clears throat> what is it that, um, oh, you're independent. You produced this book by yourself, right? Yes. Okay. Really? So you work with yes. a publisher? Ching Ching. Do you work on a publishing house or did you create your own? No, I still publish. Okay. Ching ching. Mm. And That's so, all the money coming back to so. Yeah, right back. You got it, you know. It's, it's an investment. It's a, and uh, again, how, how long did it take for you to write this book? Um, it took me probably like six months to write this book. Uh, it was pretty easy. It took about like six months. But I did just write a book in a month. You did? 44,000 words. Wow. Now, what is that book about? Um, that's my business book. It's called Ball Status. Ball mm. Status. Okay. Do you um? What is the, what is the vibe like working with other art, um, authors throughout the city? Because I know when you won your award at the at the Philadelphia Hip Hop Award for what was it the biggest or best independent? Or um, well, I had one for I'm putting in that work. And I got the right one. Yeah, yeah. 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 I feel like you have awards for that. But I did see you take pictures with like Celine. We've we yeah. had Celine we on had there before. Show, yeah. We've had uh, a couple of other artists, but I remember seeing Andrea you. Barry. Andrea Barry. Andrea Yes, Miss Barry. Um, so, what is it like when you meet up with other um, authors? And is it love? I mean, yeah, for me, it's all, well, for me, it's always love. I'm just like, yes, yeah, you made it past that finish line. Walk, I'm in. It's nothing like. Being around people that's in the same industry as you, so right. you can bounce off of each other and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was all love, so I ain't got nothing to say. Okay. If it was not, I don't know. So there's never been any hate towards you or anybody like hating on you or anything like that? I mean, you know, it's always going to be stuff, but I don't, I don't know. I don't care. I don't care. I'm okay. sending hate, I'm sending love. Oh, so wow. What the heck? Take that word of energy somewhere else. I, I like that. That ditty right there. Yeah, I need all love. All love, all love. Yeah. His name Love. Brother Love. Brother Love. <laughs> Sean, your name should be Brother Love. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> no, it shouldn't. So what is this next book coming out? I am still, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still working on the release date because I have so many projects coming up. I'm working on the book tour. I'm trying to get that together. It's like so much that I'm, I got going on. It's like, how you want to do this? How you do So I'm actually trying to work on my dates. Um, I have a book tour that's that's in the working. I'm trying to put that together. Um, I have a little TV show, some some that was offered that's supposed to be going on too. So I'm right. looking so much. So I'm trying to see. I don't know. Awesome. Maybe the end of the summer. I'm looking okay. back. Yeah, okay. I find the end of the summer sometimes. Listen to yeah. this chick. She is doing it all. Like we're gonna see her all over the place. And y'all, so I noticed you didn't want to drink our water that we offer you. And you pull out a polar spring. 
Wait a minute now. Hold on now. Come on. That was the order that I already had in my bag. I always have order in my bag. I be ripping. You know, I have to pull out because my face is a little raspy, so I always got to have some order on my deck. I don't want this. Let me pull this out real quick. I have order. No, that's correct. Yes. Why? Really? Why the conversation is a book order? She's drinking. Yeah. I don't even know what it is. No. Or no, I don't know. I really, I really don't drink their part because it's one of the dirtiest waters. What? <laughs> <laughs> I drink polar water. Polar spring. Oh, excuse yeah. me, this is ah, acting. Put it down. You should be video tape. Put that down. Drink the hell out of that. What are you talking about? I was thirsty. <laughs> I mean, I'm just. This is the dirtiest water. You, you know, listen, you gotta I know what you put in your body. Pause. Alright, please, please pause. Alright, so this is a funny story, right? Tell me what you, what you think about this. I can't take him sometimes. You, get, you see? Like, yeah, he's crazy. Alright, so there's a mister, a mystery crabber, right? <laughs> who, was on, who was on the loose. Okay, and it was a human being taking dumps on a uh, New Jersey high school track mm. after school. Um, after school, and he kept repeatedly doing this, and, nice. the, and the kids started to notice that it was human dumps, not like a dog dump, it was a human dump. Human so, the principal and staff decided to add the video, add video cameras, and they found out it was the superintendent of the school. <laughs> what in the devil? <laughs> you okay. Superintendent. He probably Tom, throwing shit of that place. Thomas Tremol Tremolini, um, if I'm saying that. Allegedly shit Tremol on track. No, no, no. He, he did. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's he was 42. Yeah. He's 42. Um, he lives about three miles from the um, Homedale High School um, area in, in uh, North Jersey. Mm. And uh, he was running the track of the athletic field around 5.50 a.m. when he was arrested. And they <laughs> found him. Just, just then taking a crap on the uh, track. A superintendent. What? Isn't that a way to say it? Isn't that a way to say it? I would want that guy on my school, superintendent. So they you shit on the other school? <laughs> yes, oops, I just shit on yeah. it. <laughs> well, another school, not my school. So he shit it on his school. Oh, school. school. Well, yeah. school. I think it was a rival school. No, it was his school. It was, it was his school. Hey, okay. superintendent, come on. But even still, the superintendents oversee like. Are they black or white? Huh? Oh, white. Thank you. I did. <laughs> <laughs> they have the picture of him um, up on Twitter. And when I read the story, I was like, you nasty, low down. That's the way I'm saying, fuck you, students and your parents and everybody who's working. <laughs> no, so, oh, man. That's some crazy things are going on in the world. Like, I'm, I'm so, like, I don't have any kids, you know, I'm not saying that. Please. I don't want any. Oh. Please. But I'm <laughs> no, I need to stress. I'm afraid that you don't have You have, you know what? That's so wrong. That's so wrong. I love the single K mother. The unpregnant one. Yeah. Because you think when I get pregnant, I'm not gonna be oh, it's gonna be over. It's gonna be you over. Think so? Never. I'm gonna be fly crazy all the time. We had the show. All right, it's been a drop my show, and we had it was four of us. We had a co-host, her name was Miss Opinion. She wanted to pop on our kids and never she never came back. Well that's her, that's not me. Mm. As I drink all my dirty water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so look, you know, let's get into um this other art. Right, we got our mixed bike. Oh no, this other song. Future. Oh, this is new feature off of the soundtrack. Of Damn, what's that movie called? <laughs> Shit, not Shaft. Yeah. Shaft? Yeah. There's a Shaft movie called? New Shaft. I yeah. don't know. But Coming the song out. is called No Shame. It's Future and Party Next Door. I'm a fan of Party Next Door, though. Even though he's not cute. I love his music. Not cute to me, by the way. Wow. <laughs> Canada, stand up. <laughs> it's the Drop Night Show on Water Ice Radio. Let's go. Yo, that was our great mix by DJ Mixon. Shout out to DJ Mixon. So behind the scenes, we asked it and does she know how to cook? And she said she know how to cook. What you know how to cook? Everything. 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 And I don't care. Everything. Everything. 
Oh, I guess you want to go here and forget it. Shit, this big me. Oh, I'm a good girl. You know how to cook. And I'm like, anything that tastes like, it smells like shit. Let's be clear. I don't eat pork anymore. I don't eat chillis or big feet. I just know how to cook it very well. <laughs> and Sean said okay. he don't eat anything that smells like shit. And I said, a self asshole. No, 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 you really felt I was going to let you breathe. <laughs> Fuck it, you brought it up. We here now. Yo. You do eat asshole. What? Right. <laughs> no. I heard the stories of the girls. I heard no. the stories. No, no, no. Whoa. Anyway. <laughs> So, but so we're gonna be we're wrapping up this show. It was actually an amazing show. Yo, Thank you so much for coming yeah. up. Everybody, make sure you go cop this book. book. All right, go to her IG page, DM her. She can get it to you personally. Her website is under construction. It's Davida and Young, and the book is called Number One Rule: Never Give Up. It's her autobiography that talks about basically what she's been through and how she's overcome a life of being in uh, the the uh, system from 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 the age of five years old and <clears throat> later being a runaway teen um, at the age of fifteen. So you know, it's just basically the life of the everyday teenage girl that's going through it, just like everybody else. So. And in the back of her book, yes. I was like, oh, she must be singing her heart out. You know what? I was Who tired. You that was just to let you know, like, I'm tired and I keep okay. taking no more. Like, I just. I was about to say, no, oh, she was singing. I'm free. Like, if you're not trying to get that last scream no. out. Yeah. Yeah, so just let it just, that's it. Like, when out. you did this photo shoot, did you really do that scream? Or it was just. Yeah, I, no, I really did the scream. <laughs> I didn't exist to be right there, so I'm screaming. I'm going to make her get it. But I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah. you, should just, you should do a lot more. So, have more. your family. Supported you with this book? Uh, Do you talk about the family in the book? Yeah, I talk okay. about a little bit of everything. Yeah, it's a lot in there. Uh, I do get some support from my family, um, especially my aunt. She's like my number one supporter. Aunt Tisha. Yeah, she always, <laughs> she is just like my bank on. She down for whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but I, I um do get the support from my family. It's like when my family, it's like one of those things where it's the, I was the one to bring certain things to light words, those stuff get brushed mm-hmm. underneath the rug. So it's like, it's not that they don't support me. They, I don't want to say that they don't, because they do. It's just like, secretly support, but yeah. brush underneath the rug, but you still got my support. So it's like one of those type of things. Like. And that's so common in like the, in a lot of come up, you know, races where families don't um, um, go confront like being molested or, you know, going mm-hmm. through the system as far as, you know, um, ch- child abuse and all types of stuff. Like they just don't confront it. It's something that people just don't want to acknowledge that it even happens. They just want to turn a blind eye and keep moving with their life. But I, mean, I think they, people are afraid to be judged. Yeah, yeah, and no one really wants to just say that. Close, yeah, yeah close this part of our book, yeah. of our, our lives. Let's move forward. Let's have some yeah. closure with it. A lot of people want that closure. They don't know how to feel with the pain and deal with the pain and the issue of, you know. Because I'm like, to write this book and put it out, you're not afraid to be judged, are you? No, for what? Because I I just look at it like, um, we all got skeletons in our closet. Some got more, some got less, but it's like, okay, I may got a little bit more than you, but baby, we still got them skeletons in that closet. So it's like, it is what it is. You know, I wasn't. Provide with a survival guy, so I made the decision that I, I thought was best for me at the time. Now, it's no excuse because I'm a whole grown woman now. I'm not a teenager anymore, I'm not a young child, I'm a whole grown woman. And, you know, my 30s. So, <laughs> I should be getting this thing called You don't look your 30s. So, I'm because at the end of the day, people judge you anyway, but people do good and bad people want to judge you. They want to say something they regard. Now, I'm going to be selling judgment. You talk about, you know, the bad that I did talk about to get to why she did this, but. She did this too, so. But she turned it all around and now she's making money off of it. So, whatever you want to say, just make sure you put some comments behind it. Like, when you start promoting this book, (laughs) like when you started promoting this book and posting it on your social media page, did you see like some of the trolls on your page and Mm -hmm. some of the comments they were saying? No, actually, I've been getting like a lot of um, ideas, like a lot of positive feedback. Yeah, they've been messing like. Oh my God, you know, I thought I was the only one that went through this and thank you so much for inspiration. And you know, they be texting me good stuff. I haven't got any 
bad feedback like that. It was like a lot of inspirational stuff and girls like, you know, I felt so good after I read this, you strong and that game in the stream just to keep going. So it was all love. I thank you to all my supporters, everybody that DM me, you know, just warm for me. Like it was I got good feedback from the public. So that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. And where so stay out of a DM please. Yes. Cause I'm coming for you, I'm telling on you. <laughs> <laughs> That includes you, obviously. I don't be in the DM. I don't do it. You not know who I am. I don't be in the way to DM. Well, look, thank you so much for coming. Um, just know you definitely have a home and yeah. a family here at the Drop Night Show where I come back with any other of your endeavors that you have. Any events you got going on, definitely let us know. Um, she likes makeup too. Yes, we definitely love makeup. She don't even know how to put lipstick on, right? No, she didn't. Sean was waiting for something yeah, in the back. Yeah, exactly. Come on, ask him. Yeah. Did you did good. Did good. Like, up here, put her lipstick yeah. on like she was a joker. He is not. Thank you guys so much. Come back every Thursday, Thursday, 8 to 10 p.m. on Water Ice Radio. We yeah. are here. You can listen live on that free tune in app. F -R -E sure you can download the free tune in app, search Water Ice Radio, and the Drop Night Show is here. Um, or again, normally we're on Facebook Live, so you can, you can do that. Um, but yo, Water Ice is popping. Make sure you follow the, our family. There's other stations and other shows. Oh, Laura Ray Live, Black is the New Weird. Weird. Um, and definitely uh, just stay tuned for Water Ice. We're moving throughout the city. This and summer. shout out to our other sponsor, Boom Philly. Oh, yeah. They're, they're more and bad. the New Stand Association. Oh, wow. Yeah, we all over Philly. Definitely. So thank you guys. Yeah. See you next week. We're about to drop my show. Yo. I'm so tired. Thank you.